mighty God. Somebody ought to just shout, mighty God. What a mighty God that we serve. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, bless us now as we prepare to hear from heaven. We pray, God, that you would fix our hearts and our minds to receive what you would have for us. Bless now as we prepare to sit at your table. Give us an appetite to eat this morning. Oh God, I pray that you would bless us now with your word. Let us hear from heaven, God. Not hear what our feelings, not hear, oh God, with self ambitions, but let us hear because we know we need to grow. We need to hear so we can get better day by day. We need to hear because we got some things that we're dealing with that we don't have an answer to. We're praying, God, that you would bless us now. Oh, God, give me the strength to preach your word. Let me preach like I never preached before. Not only let them be hearers, but let them be doers of your word. In the name of Jesus. Because we serve a mighty God. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, God, you are a good God. And above you, there is no other. So thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. And thank you, God, for how you're going to do it. In the name of Jesus, we ask it done. Let every heart believer say amen. Amen again. Amen to all of our brethren and our deacons. Thank God for you, all of our sisters. Amen. It's just good to see all of you on this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready for the word of God. Amen. Thank God for our music ministry on this morning. Minister Devin, thank God for uh, First Lady this morning. And I just thank God for God allowing us to be here one more time. Amen. Hold your Bibles up. Let's grab our Bibles and we're going to get right into the word. Amen. Amen. It don't take God a long time to do what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. All right. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I can I am I can do what it says I can do I'm a believer and not a doubter a doer not just a hearer my life has been made better after hearing the word of faith faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Somebody say, I love the word. Somebody say it again, I love the word. Amen. Why don't you open your Bibles to 1 John? I'm sorry, not 1 John, but St. John. St. John chapter 10. Amen. The Gospel of John chapter 10. New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, <laughs> John chapter 10. starting at verse number seven. I want to say thank you to all of you who came with us on last week uh, to the uh, Walnut Springs Church. What an awesome time we had. Amen. With our sister church here in the city. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of you that came. And uh, the rest of us took a Sunday off. Amen. Amen. Verse 7 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I 
am the door of the sheep. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Shall go in and come out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I want to declare to St. Mary this morning that this is the year of open doors. Amen. This is the year of open doors. I need your prayers because preaching and praying goes together. Amen. This is the year of open doors. My brothers and my sisters, I believe that we are in a season of not just windows anymore because we have recited that so long in our churches and I still recite it every Sunday that God will open up windows from heaven yes. and pour out blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. But I just believe that there is not just uh, some windows that God is opening for his people but now Amen. Uh, in our New Testament church, he's opening some doors. Can I get a witness? Amen. I mean, when God closes one door, he knows how to open another. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. It's always been hard, amen, for us to wait for God to open some doors. Can I get a witness right amen. there? Uh, because we have developed, amen, some patience in our waiting. He makes us to wait to teach us some lessons in our waiting. Can I get a witness? All right, All and besides, right. it's too difficult for us, for some of us, to get through some windows. Mm -hmm. And so not only did he put windows in a house, but he also put some doors. Doors, if you will, my brothers and sisters, are an access, if you will. It is a symbolic of transition or passage from one place to another. Can I get a witness? Do you realize that there are some visible and some invisible doors that God has created? Matter of fact, we walk through many visible doors in a day and freely enter where we know we have access to. But however, some doors were not meant to walk in. Can I get a witness? I mean, there are some doors that we're not a man meant to be a man access to and we would never open the doors to some of those amen places you wouldn't open a door to a private home you you wouldn't open a door to a closed office you wouldn't open a door to a locked restaurant there are some doors i wish i got somebody right there uh, that realize that there's some doors that we cannot access uh, but here it is my brothers and sisters uh, yeah, I, I know uh, the bible begins to let us know that there are some doors that God is getting ready to open. And when we begin to look in the Bible, we begin to see Jesus and, and begin to see his word open up about these doors. Can I get a witness? Uh, when you go to Revelations chapter 3, verse number 8, the Bible says, I know your works. I see, amen, I have set before you an open door. Somebody say open door. And no man can shut for how you have a little strength and have kept my word and have denied my name in times like these. God tells us that we got some open doors 
stood before us as long as we acknowledge who he is, as long as we stand in his name, as long as we have denied uh, the world and kept Jesus on our forefront. Uh, not only that, but when you read in Matthew chapter number 7, verse 7 through 8, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks will receive and he who seeks will find. And him who knocks the door will be opened. I came to declare to you this morning that if you just knock on heaven's door, God is going to open heaven to your life. I dare you to look at somebody and say just knock on it. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, but when you look in Revelations chapter 3, verse number 7, uh, it is the, the, the apostle that is writing to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. He said, these things says, he who is holy, he who is true, he has the keys of David, and he who opens the door, and no one shuts, and shuts the door that no one man can open. Yeah. Do you realize that can't nobody do what God can do? Because some of us have been wandering through life trying to find some answers and God opens a door that man couldn't open. But then there's some doors that God closed that no man can, y'all ain't saying that. And so here it is that we begin to look at life and we begin to look at every challenge. Amen for us is, is simply, watch this, an opportunity for new doors. Somebody say new doors. New doors, new doors of hope. You got to begin to have hope in this life, hoping that things are going to get better, hoping that better days are ahead, hoping that your situation is not going to last always, hoping that. God is going to move in God's own time. Matter of fact, the Bible began to let us know that you ought not build your trust on man. You ought not build your trust on the things of this world, but you ought to build your trust and your hope ought to be in Jesus. Uh, matter of fact, that's a new door, a new door of hope. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I want to know what are you really hoping for this morning? What did you hope would happen here this morning? What did you hope to happen on this Sunday? Amen. On the Lord's Day. What did you hope that God would move? Did you hope that God would trouble the water? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Did you hope that God would answer your prayers? What did you wake up hoping for? Not only that, but then there's the door he's going to open of my lips. And you got to be careful what you speak in this season. Because the Bible begins to let us know that there is power, amen, life and death in the power of your tongue. You can speak damnation on your own life and don't even know it. You can speak destruction on your own life and don't even know it. That's why you ought to walk up with, wake up with a positive attitude. Look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm going to do something great today. I'm going to help somebody along the way. I'm going to do something that pleases God and not just just man. Oh, my brothers and sisters, there is the door to my lips. But not only that, but there is doors that God is going to open to my prayers. Do you realize that when you pray, God has a way of opening some doors that you didn't even realize God was going to do? The Bible said with man, it is impossible. It is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All you got to do is believe it. Look at somebody say, I believe. Not only that, not only that, but then there's the door to my heart. And my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, it was in the days of Moses when Moses prayed to God, God, I need you to change their heart. Because the children of Israel got hard-hearted. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They got stiff-necked. Y'all remember? They started making their own gods and declaring that their God was the real God. But it was Moses that stood up 
on that mountain and said, it's God that I'm going to serve. And I ain't going to serve no other. That's when he wrote the Ten Commandments and said, thou shalt have no other God before thee. And when you realize that you got God in your heart, you can love your neighbor despite how they treat you. You can love your friends despite how they take care of you. You can love one another in spite what you're going through. I'll just look at somebody and say, my heart got to be right. Not only that, but then another door God is going to open is the door to heaven. The door to heaven. Do you realize that all of us are seeking a place, a seeking a seat in the kingdom of God? Ah! I know life, eight man, is all right down here, but there's somewhere else I'm getting ready to go. And I'm preparing my life right now for a life hereafter. I'm not just living just to be living, but I'm living to live again. And so here it is that I want to live my life in order to hear God say, welcome home. I want to hear God say, come on. Because the Bible begins to let us know that God... Jesus went to prepare a place for us. And he said, where I go, you shall be also. He said, in my father's house. And I don't know about you, but that's where I want to end up. I don't want to go to hell, but I want to go to the father's house. Because there's many mansions for me in the father's house. There's a robe for me in the father's house. There's a golden slippers and a golden crown in my father's house. And when I get over there, I don't have to worry about Mondays. I don't have to worry about Tuesdays. I don't have to worry about Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. I don't even have to worry about Saturdays because every day is going to be Sunday. And Sabbath would have no end. Uh, not only the door to heaven, but the, uh, a new door that God is going to open is the door to the house of God. And I do realize that in this season that we're living in, there are some doors to the house of God that are still shut down. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, the doors of the church, uh, amen, were closed the year before uh, and some of last year. But thank God that God's doors are back open because when we get into this house, there's a sense of relief. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When we get into this house, there's a sense of safety. When we get into this house, God allows us to understand that he's got our back and he's covering us with his blood. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I need God to open up a new door. And so when you begin to look at these doors, uh, these doors, watch this, uh, they can be more challenging to discern, uh, making it harder, if you will, to know whether or not uh, to open them uh, or uh, because behind these doors, uh, you could experience a dream come true. Uh, matter of fact, throughout my life, I've gone through many invisible doors uh, that took me to places and experiences that have changed my life. Matter of fact, when I finished my time in that particular place, I closed that invisible door behind me. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And began looking toward the new door that God is getting ready to open. And I don't know about you, but I need to declare to somebody to leave that door behind you and shut the door. Because what's behind you has already been, but what's coming is going to be greater. Look at somebody tell them God's got a greater door for you. See, some doors, some doors, some doors, uh, they begin, uh, amen, uh, that we open up sometimes can take us to a place of pain. Uh, it can take us to a, a place of misery, if you will, while others move us towards pleasure and prosperity. There are some doors I wish I never had opened in my life, and I know I can testify, somebody else can testify to that. There are some doors that you know you shouldn't have walked in, but you walked in anyway. Uh, I wish I'd never opened some of those doors, and it was if I 
forced my way inside of those doors uh, rather than waiting for God to open a new door. It, it was a, 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 always a disaster when I went my own way. It was always a, a, man, a, tra a tragedy when I opened my own way because many invisible doors have taken me to my next assignment. Some bigger than others. Most times the task I wasn't sure I could tackle, but thank God that God gave me strength. Thank God that God teaches each and every one of us how to enter and be in a place of peace. And so when you begin to look at Jesus in this text, you begin to look at Jesus in this uh, uh, book of St. John uh, chapter number 10. Uh, Jesus says, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. Uh, listen to Jesus, the door of the sheep. Who is his sheep? Uh, that's the children of his pasture. Uh, who are the children? We are his children. Uh, and so here it is now that all ever came before me are thieves uh, and robbers. Uh, but the sheep did not hear them because I I am the door. And by me, amen, if any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Uh, throughout the book of John, John Jesus now uh, begins to make claims of himself. Uh, when you read in the book of John, uh, there are seven claims that Jesus made about himself. Uh, I remember one occasion Jesus uh, said, uh, I am the bread of life. I remember on another occasion, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I remember on another occasion, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. I remember on another occasion, Jesus says, I am the true vine. Amen. Uh, but on this morning, I want to focus uh, on Jesus claiming to be this door. Uh, Let's look at Jesus talking about this door. Because when you look at a door, a door, watch this, is simply a metaphor, if you will, for a variety of things in the scriptures. Uh, open doors are metaphors for hospitality to strangers. A door is an expression, if you will, uh, for even what we let in and let out of our lives. That's why Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And he said, if you open up, I'll come in. But you got to be careful who you open your door up to in life. Preach, Pastor Jones, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, because when you open up the door to the wrong person, uh, they'll cause trouble. Uh, they'll cause destruction. Uh, they'll try to tear up your life. Uh, have you ever had some people come into your house and tear your house up? Uh, and you know you left, you thought you left it in good hands, uh, but they did the opposite of what you thought. And here you are trying to clean up that mess. Uh, you got to be careful. You got to be careful who you open up your doors to. Uh, because a door, watch this, uh, it also represents uh, uh, opportunities, if you will. Uh, that's why Re Revelation chapter 3 verse 8 says, I know your deeds. I have placed before you an open door that no man can shut. Uh, during uh, the first Old Testament pass Passover, uh, the blood was used uh, to mark the doors of Jesus' people uh, so they would escape death. Uh, he says, I know your works. I know your good deeds. Uh, and I have marked the doors. Uh, amen. Uh, that I open doors that no man can shut. Uh, in other words, he told the children of Israel, when I send the death angel through the land, uh, he's going to kill uh, all of the, amen, boy, the firstborn kids uh, of Pharaoh's people. Uh, but I want y'all to watch Watch, wash your doorpost with the blood. I want you to spread the blood on the sides of the door. I want you to spread the blood on top of the door. And when he sees the blood, y'all ain't saying nothing. Shut the door and he'll pass by. Oh, can I tell somebody? 
somebody this morning that when God shuts the door, God is going to keep, amen, the enemy out of your house. When God shuts the door, God is going to keep you safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it brings me to Jesus' claim. Jesus said, I am the door. Yeah. The first thing I see about Jesus uh, and what he said, uh, Jesus simply tells us uh, that uh, he is a special door. Somebody say a special door. Special door. A special door, my brothers and sisters, uh, is simply the door, amen, uh, there is uh, none like Jesus. Uh, that, there's simply no other door like this door uh, because you do realize that he is a unique door. Door. He is the only way to God. Uh, matter of fact, many today would say that there are many doors that they can go in. And I would agree, but all you got to do is pick one. Because they all lead up to some the same mountain. That's why Jesus says, amen, he is the door. Amen. In John chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He says uh, he makes an exclusive claim to be the way to God. Amen. Others have claimed that they have a way to God. They were thieves and robbers. But do you realize that Jesus is the only way? I dare somebody just say Jesus is the only way. That's why Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 says enter through uh, the narrow door uh, for wide is the door and broad is the road that leads to destruction uh, and many enter through it uh, but small is the door uh, and narrow is the road that leads to life. Uh, the Bible says only a few find it uh, and so Jesus is simply telling us uh, that he is a special door that only those who know him will find life when they enter in. Uh, I came to encourage somebody to open the door and let Jesus in. Now, he is not only a unique door, but he is also a intimate door. Somebody say an intimate door. A intimate door. Notice that the sheep did not listen to the thieves and robbers. They knew the voice of the shepherd. Jesus is a special door because uh, he invites us to have intimacy with him. Uh, you know that, that some bosses have a closed door policy uh, and you can never get in to see them. There's others who have an open door policy uh, and are very approachable. And so Jesus' door is always open uh, and invites us to get to know him and deepen our relationship with him. And so here it is in Revelation chapter 3 verse number 20. The Bible says here I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice who are you listening to this morning? Ah, because some of us didn't come to listen at the word of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some of us didn't come to hear what heaven had to say. Some of us wanted to come and hear what the songs were going to be. Some of us came to hear what Jones had to say. But can I tell you, it don't matter what Jones said as long as God is speaking through Jones to tell you how to get to heaven and see Jesus for yourself. Look at somebody and say, we got to have intimacy with God. We got to have intimacy because we often use that same verse for salvation. But it is appropriate to use it that way. But actually, it was written to the church as an imitation for them to have an intimate fellowship with Jesus. Jesus lets us know that he is a unique door. Jesus lets us know that he is a man, uh, uh, an intimate door. But now Jesus tells us that he is a saving door. Can I get a witness? Matter of fact, uh, Jesus is a special door uh, in that it is exclusive and personal. But we also learn in verse number nine, verse part A, that I am 
come the gate, Jesus says, and whoever enters through me will be saved. Jesus is a saving door because whoever enters through him will be saved. Uh, you can't go around Jesus. You can't bypass Jesus uh, because if you're going to be saved from your sins, you got to have a man a promise that God has given you of eternal life. You got to go through Jesus in order to get there. Can I tell you what they used to say when I was a kid? They said you must come in at the door. Good God Almighty, there it is. Uh, they said if you want to be saved, if you go live right, you got to come in at the door. And then they used to tell me when I was a little boy that God, Jesus is so wide that you can't get around him. Jesus is so high that you can't go over him. Jesus is so low that you can't go under him. So you got to come in. That good news right there at the door. Look at somebody tell them to open that door of Jesus. You got to come in at the door. That's why Romans chapter 10, uh, uh, verse number 9 and 10 tells us that if thou confess thy mouth, uh, amen, uh, well, Jesus is Lord, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, uh, the Bible said that thou shalt be saved. For it is with the heart uh, and that you believe uh, and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess what you read. Uh, it's it seems that man is always trying to invent new ways uh, to get to God. Uh, it uh, seems like man is always trying uh, to invent new ways, uh, amen, to be spiritual. Uh, but there's no new sex, there's no re religions, uh, amen, that can pop up all over the place uh, that can tell you uh, like the scriptures can tell you. Uh, the scripture is clear that salvation is found only in Jesus. Uh, matter of fact, salvation is found uh, in no one else. Uh, but there is no other name under heaven given by whereby men can be saved. Uh, matter of fact, what does Jesus save us from? Uh, that's a good question because Jesus saves us uh, from our sins. Uh, that's why 1 Timothy uh, chapter number 1 verse 15 says, here is the trustworthy saying that that deserves full acceptance. Uh, Jesus Christ came into the world uh, to save sinners uh, of whom Paul said, I'm the worst of. Oh, uh, ain't no need to walk around thinking you better than nobody else. Oh, uh, ain't no need to walk around thinking, you, hey man, their sins is greater than your sins. Uh, need to walk around thinking, uh, amen, that you're better than everybody else, but you got to learn that all oh, have sinned and fallen short of the divine glory of God. Uh, and so Jesus saves us from sins, uh, but not only does he save us from sins, uh, he saves us from death. Uh, he gives us eternal life. Uh, that's why James chapter 5 verse number 20 says, remember this, uh, whoever turns a sinner from from the error of his way uh, will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Uh, Jesus is a special door. Somebody say he's a special door. Uh, not only that, but let me tell y'all this before I take my seat. Uh, Jesus is uh, a, 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 a intimate door. Jesus is uh, a man, an exclusive door. Now we begin to see Jesus as uh, uh, not only a saving door, but a secure door. Somebody say a secure door. A secure door in verse 9 part B. Uh, he will come in and go out and find what? pasture. Uh, the imagery here is that the sheep are safe uh, when the shepherd is present. Uh, the sheep can come into the pen and feel safe uh, because uh, a man they can go out and they can go in and find pasture uh, for their safety. Uh, I love 
the way the message Bible, amen, puts this verse. He said, the Bible says, I am the gate. And anybody who goes through me will be cared for, who freely go in and out and find pasture. The sheep are safe to move around and about to find the shepherd's provision. And I don't know about you, but in this season that we're living in, many people are getting sick. Many people are losing their lives. But I find Pat safety in Jesus. I find safety in knowing that my shepherd leads me to the place I need to be. That's why David said that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in what green pastures. Oh, ain't that good to know that your shepherd will give you what you need when you need it, how you need it, and when you need it. Can I get a witness? Uh, the same way, the same way uh, as the sheep, uh, uh, we are safe to come in and go out, my brothers and sisters. Uh, we are safe to find uh, pasture. Uh, we are safe and secure from the enemy. Uh, amen. And we can come in and feast on the riches of Christ. Uh, when we come in the building, our relationship uh, is secured uh, with Christ through the Bible study, through prayer through fellowship with others. Those of us who know the Lord Jesus needs to be aware of the door that leads to a deeper relationship with him. Uh, and we need to be more intentional about going in and growing in. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We need to be more intentional. I know folks are talking about we need to shut the church down, but we need to be intentional about our God. Because our God is intentional about saving you. Look at you, you're still here. Look at you, million didn't make it, but you're still one of the ones that did. Look at you, you didn't have to be here, but God spared your life. Likewise, we need to remember that Jesus wants us to come in and go out. Because when we do that, we are safe to go out, amen, to live for him, serve others. We can risk going on mission trips, inviting our international people into our homes or sharing Christ with our neighbor. We can risk doing his will, not because we will be saved, but because we we are in his care. Yeah. Right. And so here it is, my brother and sister, and I'm taking my seat. All right, All Many right. fall for the glitter of this world. Yeah. Many fall for the lie, mm -hmm. the lies of this world yeah. that satisfy mm -hmm. our sins. Yeah. But to a person, we eventually discover that sin is only pleasant for a season. Uh, it, it leaves us empty after we've done it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It leaves us searching for, amen, the meaning and purpose of our lives. Jesus comes to say there's more to this door thing. He said there's more to life than just living and dying. Uh, God gives us the promise of eternal life. God gives us the promise to be rich and fulfilling a man life in this world. We don't just have to wait for the life over there to enjoy. But we got victory right now. Romans 8 37 says no in all these things, I'm yes, more than a conqueror mm -hmm. through him yeah. that has loved us. Amen. God is getting ready mm -hmm. to open new doors. Yes, new doors for your life. Yes, new doors for your family. Yes, yes. New doors for your careers. Yes. New doors for your relationships. New doors. God is getting ready to take us in to some new doors. Jesus said, I am the door. 
And if you get Jesus, you can get some new doors. All right. All right. Can I get a witness? Right. New doors can be open, but you can't open them with the same old mindset. Amen. New doors can be experienced, mm -hmm. but you can't go through them yeah. with the same old habits. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to have a new mindset. You got to have a new way of thinking mm -hmm. in order to get through some new doors. Can I get a witness? All right, yes. All right. God has got some doors waiting for us. All we got to do is trust it. I can't see it right now. I don't know when it's going to come. But when it comes, I'm going to walk through that door. I believe that he's opening some new doors. For somebody's financial situation. I believe he's opening some doors. For somebody's help. On today. I know the enemy is trying. To distract you. I know the enemy is trying to push you out of the church. The enemy will tell you. You don't need to go down there. You don't need to go and hear. What they got to say. But some of us have pushed. Father. We push past all of that negative and stood on the positive. I believe that God is getting ready to open some new doors. And when he opens some new doors, don't be too scared that you let the door swing open right in front of you and you don't walk in. Have enough faith to know that if God takes me to a new door, he's going to care for me when I get in there. Lord, you are good. Everybody stand. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try not, you've been. Can anybody testify? So good. You've been so good, oh boy, you've been so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are good. If you know it, help me say it. You've been so good. Come on. Lord, you are good. You've been better. Because I wanted to let y'all know that So many doors you've opened So many ways you've made So many times you healed me You've been better than good to me So many doors you've opened So many ways you've made So many times you healed me You've been better than good to me Come on So many doors Yes, God, you've been better than good. Say it again. Come on. So many doors you've opened. So many doors you ain't made. So many times you healed me. Yes, God, you've been better than good to me. Come on. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. Say it. You've been better than good to me. Woo. You've been better than good to me. Good God Almighty. Huh? You've been better than good to me. Me. 